Hello and welcome to Axis Asia. Coming up, we take a look at Kazakhstan, the former Soviet Republic facing its biggest crisis since scanning independence 30 years ago. Rising fuel prices, deadly riots, and a bloody crackdown. The unrest a blow to its reputation as a tightly controlled and stable country. Fears are growing that China could invade Taiwan. Beijing sees a self-ruled island as a breakaway province, but Taiwan insists it's a sovereign nation. We'll look at how the divide is straining ties between other countries and China. First, the new year began in Kazakhstan with the government lifting its price cap on fuel, roughly doubling the cost for people to fill up their cars. Protests spread across the nation of 19 million people and soon transformed into violent unrest and a bloody crackdown. Well over 100 people were killed. Thousands were arrested. At the request of Kazakhstan's president, Russia sent paratroopers to help stabilize the country. Yuko Roye takes a closer look at the former Soviet Republic. It's a country the size of Western Europe that's aspiring to become one of the top 30 global economies by 2050. As well as its rich energy resources, Kazakhstan's political stability has helped attract foreign investment. Much of the stability and economic growth can be attributed to one man, Nursultan Nazarbayev, who ruled the country with an iron fist since the breakup of the Soviet Union until 2019, and has continued to wield power from behind the scenes. A lot of the public anger that's come to a head is directed at the 81-year-old. We call it the Nazarbayev government because Tokayev is a puppet of him. This dictatorship of Nazarbayev, this man who has oppressed the Kazakhstani people until today, set the place on fire by raising energy prices in a country that sits on large gas reservoirs. In recent years, Nazarbayev's personality cult has been increasing. In 2010, his status as Ilbasi, or leader of the country, was enshrined in Kazakhstan's constitution. He has been on the 10,000 Tenj banknotes since 2016. The capital Astana was renamed after him following his resignation in 2019. While some analysts suggest there may be an internal power struggle behind the ongoing unrest, the West is concerned about the quick deployment of troops from the Russian-led military alliance CSTO at the request of incumbent President Kasim Jomat Tokayev to help restore order. Tokayev will have to pay for it by reducing the sovereignty of his own country. He will depend on Russia more heavily. Even in comparison to Nazarbayev, Putin will not miss this chance in this regard. The current president removed Nazarbayev from the powerful Security Council without explaining why. The former strongman has not appeared in public since the start of the protests. Well, Taiwan began the new year with its troops simulating urban warfare with China. The self-ruled island lives under constant threat of an invasion by Beijing, and China considers Taiwan a breakaway province that it will reclaim one day. Peter O'Brien has a story. This is Taiwan's first line of defense, a beach on the Kinmen archipelago, dotted with spikes to stop landing craft just three kilometers from the glittering towers of mainland China. There are bunkers and other remnants of warfare. Everyone here hopes they'll remain artifacts of a distant memory, even though Beijing is threatening to capture Taiwan one way or another. It makes you realize just how close we are. It's stressful. Slogans reading Defend Our Territory and dozens of Taiwanese flags adorn the local streets. Soldiers show day trippers how they defended themselves against the communists and how they will do so again if need be. I'm ready for anything. At home, I have medical supplies, food, a survival kit, even a gas mask, and self-defense weaponry. 
Kinmen's 150,000 residents are used to living in the shadow of their huge neighbor. A few years ago, IT worker Stella Chen moved into this house, built in the 70s. Like many others, it's equipped with an emergency underground bunker. I really hope I don't have to use this shelter in the future. Across the water, China has been practicing beach landings as part of frequent military drills, while flights into Taiwan's air defense zone have become an almost daily occurrence. The threat from the Chinese Communist Party has been a constant presence ever since the nationalist government led by Chiang Kai-shek retreated here in 1949. If China attacks Taiwan, we can reach as far as Shanghai. But in any case, we don't want war. Until the 1970s, this three-story loudspeaker blasted propaganda messages across the sea. It's a lot quieter these days. Its messages directed at tourists instead. But the war of words between Taiwan and China continues. And in the past year, China has stepped up pressure to isolate Taiwan from its international allies, as is the case with Lithuania. The European country let Taiwan open a de facto embassy in its capital, and in retaliation, Beijing downgraded its ties with Lithuania. Here to talk to us a bit more is Yena Li. Hello to you, Yena. And now, despite this uh, row between China and uh, Taiwan, apparently it's a good time to be Lithuanian in Taipei. Yes, absolutely. Taiwan is having a bit of a, a Lithuania moment right now. The Washington Post reports actually that some taxi drivers have been waiving fares for Lithuanian clients and that uh, people have been looking up cultural information about the small Baltic state online. Their uh, exports such as beer, rum and chocolate have been flying off the shelves in uh, Taiwan. There's been a, bit, a lot of uh, enthusiasm for Lithuanian people and Lithuanian businesses to show thanks to their country for defying Beijing, Taiwan's new de facto embassy, was the first European outpost uh, created in 18 years. So uh, for China, though, um, it was a major insult, of course, to upgrade uh, relations with what it sees as a domestic uh, province, even more so because um, the uh, new diplomatic bureau has the name Taiwan in it instead of uh, Taipei. Here in Paris, for example, um, Taiwanese diplomats work at the Taipei Representation Office. Lithuania's president has since said that the name was a mistake but isn't backing down otherwise. The European country is also preparing to open an equivalent office on the Asian island too. Now, consumer enthusiasm, though, won't make up for all this lost business. Tell us what's at stake for Lithuania. Well, Lithuanian envoys shut down their embassy in Beijing, and now uh, trade with China is at a standstill. Beijing using once again its economic might to, uh, to deal with diplomatic rows, as it did with Australian wine and uh, with Norwegian salmon. To help deal with this backlash, uh, Taiwan's state-owned liquor company actually bought over 20,000 bottles of Lithuanian run rum last month. That was banned from entering mainland China. Longer-term solutions include a $200 million deal um, for investment uh, proposed by Taipei. And Washington, meanwhile, offered a $600 million export credit deal. But to be clear, it's a big risk for one of Europe's smallest countries. Is it worth it? Well, China actually only accounted for 1% of uh, Lithuania's exports, meaning that the Baltic state can kind of afford to uh, do this risky move compared to other countries. Plus, with all the pledges to make up with lost uh, trade that I mentioned before, the economic fallout hasn't been as devastating as it could have been. Now, Politico is even reporting that Lithuania has potential investment opportunities with Taiwan's very coveted semiconductor industry, which, it, which would be seen as a reward kind of for its uh, bravado. The problem, though, is that it's not just about Lithuania anymore. Um, foreign companies working in Lithuania or with Lithuanian suppliers, they're also reporting that they've been shunned by Chinese buyers. Beijing, of course, denies that it's directly behind this wider boycott, but the EU is thinking about mounting a legal case against the Asian giant at the WTO. All right. Thank you very much, Yena. Yena Lee with a look at the strained ties between Taiwan and China.
And finally, there was some lighter news at the start of 2022. The Chinese city of Harbin holding its famous annual Snow and Ice Festival, a festival spanning across 400,000 square meters. But because of the pandemic, for a second year in a row, ice sculpture competitions, ice swimming, and sadly, ice weddings were all canceled. With the Beijing Winter Olympics starting in February, China is doubling down on measures to prevent any new outbreak that could affect those for cities. Well, we'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching, and please stay tuned to France 24.